Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Morning Musings. Happy Friday morning to you. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. This is video number two in my review and response to four articles that Dr. Kenneth Gentry has recently written, uh, supposedly in review of my book entitled, Watching for the Parousia, Were Jesus' Apostles Confused? Now, Mr. Gentry's four articles are not so much a review as the first two articles particularly are, are really nothing but a vitriolic adjective lace attack on, on the book and on me personally. Uh, the, uh, the, the language, the attitude demonstrated by Dr. Gentry, especially in the first two articles, uh, is something that in all of my years of reading, his books, his articles, I have never, never, and by the way, I've had several people that have followed his ministry for years say exactly the same thing. They have told me they have never seen such an emotional response from Kenneth Gentry as is manifested and exhibited in his first two articles. Now, by the way, uh, I, I have already responded to Dr. Gentry's first two articles. I, I wrote four articles in response to article number one. I wrote uh, another article in response to his article number two. All of that is on my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com. Now, let me urge you. Let me, go, let me urge you to go there to my website and read every word that he wrote. And by the way, I copied and pasted every word that he wrote with the exception of some ads for uh, materials and some absolutely irrelevant verbiage that he threw in about going to eat, for instance. Uh, and read my responses carefully. Number one, you'll see that I don't use any of the verbiage none of the attitude that Dr. Gentry manifests. And yet he says, it's me that has an attitudinal problem. Now that's more than abundantly strange. And let me reiterate something here. Again, I've been following Dr. Gentry's writings for years and years. I consider his book, Before Jerusalem Fell, to be a masterpiece. I loved it when it came out. I love it to this day. I think that it's one of the ex most excellent books on the early dating of the book of Revelation and the application of the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70 to be found anywhere. Uh, I believe that it and my book, Who is This Babylon, uh, present an insurmountable case for the early date of the book of Revelation and the application to AD 70. Now, with all of that said, all right, you need to understand that foundational to Dr. Gentry's eschatology is his view that, that the Olivet Discourse is divided into two subjects. I am told, I, don't, I haven't seen confirmation of it, uh, well, yes, I have come to think of it, but I am told that Dr. Gentry is currently writing, writing a book to supposedly prove that the Olivet Discourse is to be divided into two subjects. Number one, the fall of Jerusalem, and by the way, you please catch the power of this. Kenneth Gentry believes and teaches and admits that the Lord came on the clouds with the angels in flaming fire to gather the elect in resurrection with the passing of heaven and earth at the end of the age in A.D. 70. Yes, he does believe that. Now, if you believe all of that, and it's all in his books, and I document that in my book, We Shall Meet Him in the Air, The Wedding of the King of Kings, I give you his quotes, I give you the book, I give you the chapter, I give you the page number of the quotes from Dr. Gentry himself in which he espouses all of those things happened in AD 70. But of course, he turns around and says, well, yes, that's all true, but AD 70 was a type, a foreshadowing of the real end of the age, the real coming of the Lord. No such thing. Not a single place in all the Bible that indicates that. So anyway, 
in all of this, uh, in, in, in all of Dr. Gentry's writings, he says that Matthew 24 has to be divided. That when Jesus predicted the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, Matthew 23, 37, Matthew 24 and verse 2, the apostles were just absolutely blown away. They were confused. They thought in their mind, confusedly, that the destruction of that temple could not happen unless it occurred at the end of the current age, the end of human history, the end of time. Well, as, it, as I demonstrate in my book, hey, wait a minute. They knew that the fall of Jerusalem, there was a fall of Jerusalem in B.C. 586. They knew that was the day of the Lord. They knew it was the coming of the Lord on the clouds with fire, with the angels, to destroy heaven and earth. But they also knew that human history didn't end at that time. And they also knew, as I pointed out in one of my recent articles, they also knew, did they not, that Israel had four fast days, go to Zechariah chapter 9 and see, commemorating the fall of Jerusalem in B.C. 586. And they knew that time did not end. So why would they think that the, fall, that the, the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple that Jesus was predicting had to involve the end of time? Folks, it makes no sense whatsoever. But, Got to get directly into my response to Kenneth Gentry's. Now, I, I'm still in, in this video, the second video. I am responding to his very first article. You can go, you know, be sure to watch that my very first video in response to his first article. Now, Kenneth Gentry says, now remember, folks, he's supposed to be reviewing and responding to this book. Okay? This book is supposedly in the crosshairs. Okay. He says, In 2012, I spoke in Dallas at the Criswell College Conference on Perspectives on the Millennium. Also presenting papers were Dr. H. Wayne House, Dr. Craig uh, Bailing. That's a misspelling, by the way. And it's interesting to me that Gentry attacks my book for having grammatical or typographical errors in it. Yeah, he does. He attacks my book because it has typographical and grammatical errors. Well, here's, so right here, in his very first article, he lists Dr. Craig Bailing. Well, it's not Bailing, it's Blazing. And furthermore, if you go to Amazon.com and you look up Gentry, the Olivet Discourse made easy. Go down to the reviews. And the very first review, a reviewer says, the book has a lot of typos and grammatical errors in it. Huh. So my book is to be rejected, evidently, because it's got some typos and grammatical errors in it. And yet right here in the very article in which he condemns me for that, and in his book, The Olivet Discourse Made Easy, a reviewer points out, hey, it has lots of typos and lots of grammatical errors in it. Oh, well. Anyway, Dr. Craig Bailing, Dr. G.K. Beale, Dr. Craig Blomberg, and Don Preston. Don had, follow me now, Don had one of the most confusing and unenlightening presentations I have ever heard. Afterwards, several of the presenters gathered in private and mused. What in the world was he talking about, unquote? This confusion was not due solely to the alien theology flowing from Preston's hyperpreterism. Rather, it focused on his rambling, connect the dots, presentation on an issue that did not even seem related to his assigned topic. Apparently, hyperpreterist, oh, this is bad. Apparently, hyperpreterists follow Nancy, and he spells Pelosi's name, P-A-I-L-L-A-S-S-E, practice. Now, look, uh, evidently, Mr. Gentry was trying to use some kind of sarcasm because a Pelaz, Pelaz, 
is a thin mattress full, full of straw. Now, how in the world that applies here, I'm really at a loss to understand. So, Gentry's comment here seems confused and confusing. Anyway, hyperpreters follow Nancy Palanza's practice. They believe you have to adopt the hyperpreter system in order to understand it. At that conference, only the initiated understood Preston. But only Preston was initiated, and I am not entirely sure that he knew what he was talking about, but they may, pardon me, that may seem, that may have been just me and everyone else there. Well, I tell you, there is so much contained in that one paragraph, I'm not sure I have enough time to address it. Point number one, keep in mind, Gentry's article is supposed to be a review and a response to this book. Okay, watching for the parousia where Jesus' apostles confuse. So in a book or in an article supposedly dedicated to responding to this book, Gentry goes off and talks about his presentation, my presentation at Criswell College in 2012. Well, here's something you need to know. In this book, I do not say one single word about my presentation at Criswell in 2012. I just did a search in my own word, uh, you know, word processor in the document trying to find the word Criswell. It's not there. So ask yourself the question. In a book supposedly dedicated to responding to this book, in, in an article, excuse me, supposedly responding to this book, why does Gentry bring up my speech in 2012? Well, I tell you, the only reason he does so is because he is fully intent on attacking me. Now, I tell you what, I would be absolutely thrilled to death if Mr. Gentry would engage me in formal debate on the issue of my presentation at Criswell College in 2012. And any of you watching this can relay this challenge, this invitation to Dr. Gentry. Dr. Gentry, let's meet, let's debate when did the end of the millennium occur or when will it occur? I can assure you Dr. Gentry does not want to debate me on this issue. So anyway, notice what, uh, what Mr. Gentry says. He said, Don had one of the most confusing and unenlightening uh, presentations I've ever heard. Afterwards, several of the presenter, presenters gathered in private and mused, what in the world was he talking about? This confusion was not due solely to the alien theology flowing from Preston's hyperpreterism. Now, I want you, here's something absolutely amazing. Gentry says several of the presenters didn't have a clue what my presentation was all about. Well, my presentation was on the end of the millennium and the vindication of the martyrs at the end of the millennium, demonstrating that throughout Scripture, the promise of the vindication of the martyrs is posited at the day of the Lord, the day of judgment, which Revelation puts at the end of the millennium. Kenneth Gentry applies Matthew 23, the time of the vindication of all the martyrs, in A.D. 70. Kenneth Gentry himself emphasizes the importance of the doctrine of the vindication of the martyrs. So here I, here I was giving a presentation on the importance of the, of the doctrine of the vindication of the martyrs, showing the correlation between the vindication of the martyrs and the end of the millennium, and Kenneth Gentry said he didn't have a clue what my lesson was about. Not only that, Dr. Craig Blazing, not, not Blailing, or what, however he spelled it, Bailing. Dr. Blazing says, and I gave the quote in my presentation, says that the judgment 
and the vindication of the martyrs in Revelation chapter 20 is the answer to the prayer of the martyrs in Revelation chapter 6. Well, guess what that means? That means that Dr. Blazing recognizes that the doctrine of the vindication of the martyrs is directly related to the end of the millennium. And yet, Dr. Gentry says, you know, not one of the guys on that dais knew what I was talking about when I talked about the vindication of the martyrs at the end of the millennium. And here's something abundantly strange. He says that no one there, no one there understood what I said. Uh, well, that's not true. After my presentation, I had some of the students at that dispensational college come up to me and tell me that my lesson was the most powerful, the most convincing lesson, presentation they had ever heard in their life. So here's what we got. We got some dispensational Bible students, dispensational Bible students who understood perfectly well the point of my lesson. But Dr. Gentry and all these erudite scholars who were on the dais with me Boy, they just didn't have a clue about what I was saying. Now that's rather amazing. And I would suggest it's I would suggest to you, with all due respect, that Dr. Gentry and Dr. Blazing and Dr. Beal and Dr. Blomberg, I would suggest to you they understood really, really well. And by the way, I volunteered on that stage to debate any one of those men on the, on the material that I presented. You know what I got in response? Absolute, utter, total silence. Not one of them, not one of them even said no. <laughs> I mean, they totally ignored it. You know what that tells me? It tells me they realized they could not answer the material. Now, Dr. Gentry then says, uh, hyperpreterists follow Nancy Pelosi's Pauley's practice. Now look, uh, obviously Dr. Gentry was intending to insult me. <laughs> and, and by the way, if he thought he was going to annoy me, if he thought he was going to prompt me into using the same kind of insulting uh, verbiage that he did, he failed. Uh, but that really is insulting. So anyway, to continue, he says that this confusion on the part of the uh, other speakers was not due solely to the alien theology flowing from Preston's hyperpreterism. Rather, it was focused on his rambling. Now watch this. Connect the dots presentation on an issue that did not even seem related to the assigned topic. Well, again, let me tell you this. G.K. Beale believes that the end of the millennium judgment is about the vindication of the martyrs. That's what I was talking on. Craig Blazing believes, pardon me, that the judgment at the end of the millennium is about the vindication of the martyrs in answer to the prayer of Revelation 6. Dr. Craig Blomberg understands that the judgment at the end of the millennium is the time of the vindication of the martyrs. And Dr. Kenneth Gentry understands that the end of the millennium judgment is about the time of the vindication of the martyrs. And Kenneth Gentry knows Jesus put that in AD 70. And so to say that my lesson was unrelated to the assigned topic, well, let's just face it, folks, that is just flat blatantly false, and I'll say this as kindly as possible, Kenneth Gentry knows it's false. But then notice what he says, that I was, uh, I was engaging in this hyperpreterist system of connecting the dots. I have a confession to make. Yes, I, my presentation was about connecting the dots. The dots from Genesis 4, 
throughout the entirety of the Old Testament, throughout the entirety of the New Testament, the dots from one passage to another that spoke of the coming vindication of the martyrs at the day of the Lord in the last days, i.e., and at the end of the millennium. So I, I, I've got to confess, folks, I'm guilty of trying to connect the dots of passage after passage after passage that speaks of the vindication of the martyrs at the day of the Lord at the end of the millennium. Now, my question for you to consider is, what's wrong with that? Because, you see, Kenneth Gentry, ostensibly, as a Reformed believer, believes in something called analogia scriptura, or scriptura analogia. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means, for our purposes, connecting the dots from Scripture to Scripture. It means that you use this passage to help you understand this one, to help you understand Scripture. Yeah, connecting the dots. And yet, Kenneth Gentry says, my presentation was a rambling connecting the dot presentation. Well, again, I, I have to confess, I'm guilty because I connected the dots from Genesis to Revelation. And look, he says I probably did not know what I was talking about myself. Well, I have always said and I still say, I could be wrong. I wonder if Kenneth Gentry makes that admission. But again, let, let me put this presentation, let me put this invitation, let me put this challenge out there. Dr. Gentry, if I'm wrong, if I am wrong to connect those dots related to the subject of martyr vindication at the day of the Lord at the end of the millennium, if my presentation has nothing to do with the end of the millennium and martyr vindication, that's, then let you, you and me, meet in formal debate. Look, we can have a two-night debate on the radio on Two Guys in a Bible on FulfilledRadio.com. Or we can do it on YouTube. Or guess what? I'll be happy to meet you, Dr. Gentry, in a formal public debate of two nights. You can affirm one night, I will affirm an, a night as well. So the invitation is yours, Dr. Gentry. Will, are you willing to take the time? I mean, after all, you, you've taken the time to write four articles. And oh, by the way, I was told just yesterday that you, you are now doing a review of Lance Connolly's book on in his attack on preterism. So you're the man who says, you just don't have time to do this. You just don't have time to talk about any of this, and yet you're taking the time to write the articles and to review a book, another book, attacking preterism. So evidently you've got some time on your hand. So what about it, Dr. Gentry? The invitation is yours. The ball is in your court. Now, folks, I'm out of time this morning. I think you can, and oh, by the way, let me make this comment. Speaking of my Criswell presentation, that entire presentation of my presentation on the martyr vindication and the end of the millennium, I have that on CD. You can have a, your own copy of it for $12.95 postpaid. It's not on my website, so send me an email and say, I want to, I want to have a copy of your presentation on the vindication of the martyrs and the end of the millennium, the presentation that you gave at Criswell College in 2012. And the price is $12.95 post paid. That's very, very cheap. And also, don't forget, in Gentry's articles, he attacks this book as well. We shall meet him in the air, The Wedding of the King of Kings. And obviously, he attacks this book. Now look, folks, for the month of December, 2020, U.S. orders only. If you purchased all three of these books separately and paid shipping, you would pay over $60. But for December 2020, U.S. orders only, total delivered price, $42.50. Go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com. There's a wonderful tab, uh, banner right up at the top. Click on that. 
and it will walk you right through the ordering process. Well, again, thank you so much for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. Don't forget, folks, take advantage of the fantastic book order and get yourself a copy of the Criswell presentation. See for yourself. See for yourself if I properly connected the dots and the end of the millennium. Uh, I think you'll see it was the students at Criswell that were right on top of understanding what I said. All right, thanks again. Have a safe weekend. I'll see you on Monday.